And the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. Joe Biden came out and called MAGA Republicans extremists and a threat to the republic. And as a result, a teenager was run down and murdered. I'm your host, Hyde. This is Hide and Seek Media. Hello, all you beautiful and amazing people. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to the show. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified anytime I drop a new video. So, Kaylor Ellingson was an 18-year-old North Dakota teenager who w went to a street dance one night and got into a political argument with a 41-year-old man named Shannon Brandt. So, as a result of this argument, Brandt, assuming that Ellingson was calling Republican extremist groups, proceeded to get in his car and run down this 18-year-old kid. Now, Brant claims he feared for his life, saying that he thought Ellingson was calling more Republican extremists to come down and take care of him, right? When in all reality, Ellingson was calling his mom to find out if she knew Mr. Brandt, which in fact she did, but she didn't think that her son knew him. Moments later, she is called by her son again saying he or they are chasing me. And then that's the last thing she hears from her son because Mr. Brandt drunk gets behind the wheel of his Ford Explorer and chases this kid down and runs him down in the street. Then goes home, comes back to the scene later, phones 911 and reports the accident, then goes home again. By the time police get to Mr. Brandt and arrest him and give him a breathalyzer, he still is over the legal limit, blowing a .08 hours after the accident. So that, can, that tells you how drunk he was when he hit Kaylor Ellingson. All because of political rhetoric from our president in his latest speech, the all hail the high chancellor speech, which you can see my video about right here. But that rhetoric that came from the president that all MAGA Republicans are extremists and a threat to the republic is what led to this young man being run down. And it's only going to lead to more political violence. This is what leads us into a direct civil war. Now, right now, we're in a propagandist war, right? We are in a war of information. Whose information is right? Who information is wrong? Who's trying to trick you? Blah, 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 right? That's what kind of war we're in right now. That's the civil war that we're in right now. But if we continue down this path, it's going to result in more physical conflicts like this, more needless deaths of innocent teens. This kid was 18 years old. He had done nothing yet. He did not deserve to be run down in the street because he was deemed a threat based on rhetoric from our president. Now, I remember not too long ago, and it's still going on as a matter of fact, that there's this whole hearing thing about an incident that happened in 2021 Oh, man, I'm trying to put my finger on it. If any of you know, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. The January 6th committee. The entire hearing is about the riot that took place on January 6th. And I believe they tried to impeach 
President Trump because they said his rhetoric led to that event. But that's neither here nor there. We need to stop this political rhetoric that takes us this far. That kind of attitude towards all of this will just lead to more violence. That's why I like the way Senator Rand Paul addressed this situation. I have this story from Fox News. Senator Rand Paul and conservatives warn of violent consequences of Biden rhetoric following the death of North Dakota teen. And, and here's what Senator Rand Paul had to say about all that. Fox News reports, words can have violent consequences. Kentucky Republican Rand Paul, who was the victim of political violence along with his wife outside Republican National Convention in 2020, told Fox News Digital in a statement, President Biden needs to realize that his vilification of his opponent is inflaming some of his, some of his supporters to violence. As a victim of political violence, both sides need to recognize the consequences of heated rhetoric. And he's right. I 100% agree with that. Now, there have been times on this channel that I've gotten a little out of hand and gotten a little extreme, but I don't think that I've ever gone as far as to call Democrats, you know, political terrorists, right? Because, I mean, I maybe Black Lives Matter have been domestic terrorists, you know, burning down cities and stuff like that, and the people that support those groups. But I don't think I've ever actually went ahead and called Democrats political terrorists. And it's rhetoric like that that we have to be careful of. And that's why I'm going to be critical of Marjorie Taylor Greene here in her tweet where she said an 18-year-old was executed in cold blood by a Democrat political terrorist because of rhetoric like this. Democrats want Republicans dead, and they've already started the killings. Democrats' political war against patriotic Americans must end. That kind of rhetoric, that kind of rhetoric is, is crazy. It's not like Democrats are out here just straight up executing Republicans on the regular, all right? This is a one-off, but it is a result of Biden's, you know, harmful rhetoric from his speech. But I'm not going to sit here and call Shannon Brandt a domestic political or a democratic political terrorist, okay? I'm just, I can't do that. He's probably a family man. He probably had a job and he got drunk one night, got into an argument and took it too far. Now, should he pay for those actions yes 100 percent. throw the book at this guy he got behind the wheel of a car and not only killed a kid okay which drunk drivers do all the time in this country but he did it on purpose it wasn't like it was an accident it just happened they happened to get into an argument and then by happenstance the dude walked out in front of his car and he hit him no he chased him down kayler ellingson called his mom as he was being run down Okay, there is no accident here. He purposefully did it, and he even admitted he did it. Now, what they charge him with is a whole other story, right? Right now, they're charging him with vehicular manslaughter, right? I think, personally, he should be charged with murder one because he knew hitting this kid with his car potentially could kill him, and he did it anyways, not only that, but he had moments, several moments to rethink this and stop what he was doing. And he still did it. To me, that's that takes it to the level of premeditated. You got into an argument and you thought, I'm going to shut this kid up forever. And I got in my car and I drove down and I freaking ran him down. I was bound and determined to do this. That to me seems premeditated. He admits it. I mean, it's like, this guy should be charged with murder one, not vehicle, man, not vehicle homicide, vehicular homicide. And if you ask me, he should be charged with a hate crime. This was a political hate crime. And if you really want to take it that far, you could even throw some charges at President Biden. Like, let's maybe impeach this mug for that speech he did as a result, leading to the death of an 18-year-old kid. 18. Think about how old you are. And think about how dumb you were at 18. 
Think about the choices you made at 18 versus the choices you make at 30 or 40 or however old you are now. Shannon Brandt decided to get behind the wheel of his Ford Explorer and run down this kid for no other reason than he thought he was a Republican extremist and he was going to stop it right now before it got anywhere. He was not going to let this 18-year-old Republican extremist grow up to be the next Donald Trump. No way! And he got in his car and he ran him down. That is murder. Not vehicular homicide. And President Biden should be impeached just like President Trump was impeached for the harmful rhetoric that he spewed in his latest speech. But hey, that's just my thoughts. If you have a different opinion, leave it in the comments down below. Or let me know what you think about this video and the channel. I love to engage with my viewers, so feel free to fire away. But I'm going to leave it there. If you guys have made it all the way to the end of the video, I appreciate you watching. It really does mean a lot. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified anytime I drop a new video. If you like what I'm doing here, smash that like button. But if you really want to help support this channel, hit that share button and share this video on all social media platforms. Those interactions will show YouTube's algorithm that this video needs more impressions, and that's how we're going to grow the channel. I appreciate everything you guys are doing, and I will catch you later. Peace.